Ajax are back in the Champions League group stages for the first time since 2014-15. Big accomplishment for the Netherlands' most famous club. Inevitably, European competition comes with heightened attention for Ajax's young players. The likes of Matthias de Ligt, Frankie de Jong and David Neres will all be under the spotlight. And while all three of those players are intriguing in their own right, it's de Jong in particular that may be the most tantalising. Ajax have lined up mostly in either a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. With the acquisition of Daley Blint from Man United over the summer, it's meant that De Jong has transitioned from the role of a hyper-aggressive ball-carrying centre-back that he played last season to more of a deep-lying midfielder so far this campaign. Ajax prefer to progress into the middle third from the left side. A common rotation for them is to see their left back, usually Nicolas Tagliafico, positioned high up the pitch to provide width. As a result, De Jong will move into the vacated space behind Tagliafico to create something of a back three. While in possession, De Jong can either pass it horizontally to the closest centre-back to him, either Blint or De Ligt, or move the ball forwards onto one of his teammates. De Jong is a dual threat in possession from deep positions because in addition to being an accomplished passer in tight areas, he's a good enough athlete to carry the ball from deep areas and attract opposition markers before laying off a pass to an open teammate. His dribbling numbers in the Eredivisie last season were superb while playing the role of a libero at centre-back and those numbers have been solid this campaign as he's returned to a midfield role. When the ball gets to the middle and final third, De Jong can act as a release valve, ensuring that the man on the ball has an out to recycle play backwards when needed. The way Ajax play mandates that the man on the ball has multiple passing options to use. If the ball is situated on the opposite side of the pitch to De Jong, he'll shuffle over so that the team isn't at a disadvantage and possession is maintained. If the opportunity arises for him to make incisive passes forwards, he's unafraid to try, and more times than not, he's able to make that subtle but important pass. Another big feature of De Jong's is that he's always cognizant of where he is on the pitch, and how to position himself to receive a pass with minimal duress from the opponent. He'll quickly scan over his shoulder to see if there's an opponent near him, and if they're not present, he'll move into that empty space and make it easy for his teammates to pass him the ball. It's this level of understanding in combination with his other gifts that makes De Jong a well-rounded deep midfielder. Along with his offensive contributions, De Jong is also capable defensively, with his combination of intellect and athleticism. Ajax employ a counter-press immediately after a turnover, aided by having a compact style so there's easier access to the ball. His defensive numbers are solid when taking into account how Ajax dominate possession in the Eredivisie. With European football moving more and more towards a proactive pressing style at the highest level, having a midfielder who knows when to press at the right moment is essential, and de Jong has shown the ability to do that. It's easy to see why Frankie de Jong has been linked with elite clubs like Spurs and Barcelona. Spurs have benefited greatly over the years from having Moussa Dembele, who can destabilise the opposition from deeper areas, but with his age and history of injuries, Spurs have to start thinking of a future without him. De Jong's understanding of space and his style of play would fit Barcelona quite well also, as they too could do with some fresh legs in midfield. For either club, getting de Jong would ensure themselves a gifted young midfielder who has the chance to become great quite soon. Thank you.